Hello and welcome to Fireside Chat and Masters Union. I'm Vepa, a student of the cohort of 2021. And today we have with us Mr. Siddharth Balakrishna. Sir has over 16 years of experience in the field of energy, media, education, and now artificial intelligence. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you. I'd like to introduce sir even further, but given his diverse experience, sir, would you like to share your story with the audience himself? Yeah, that would be great. Um, I do have a lot of uh, variety in my career. I'll just give you a brief uh, snapshot. So post my MBA from I am Calcutta in 2004, I joined uh, the energy sector, joined a large uh, oil and gas uh, multinational, uh, British Gas, which is now part of the Royal Dutch Shell Group. Then I moved into consulting. So first worked with uh, Accenture and then with KPMG, moved back to the oil and gas industry, joined a Scottish uh, firm called Kane, which was uh, subsequently acquired by Vedanta. In uh, Kane, first was in the project management team, uh, you know, implementing some of India's largest oil projects, then moved into strategy, uh, spent about seven and a half years in Kane oil and gas. Uh, more recently worked uh, in the media domain, was uh, responsible for implementing digital initiatives in over 16 companies uh, of the SL group, was the chief strategy officer of the group. So had a fairly exciting uh, role and a fairly exciting uh, stint over there in which uh, I was looking at multiple entities and looking at bringing in innovations and new strategic initiatives in the group. As part of that, uh, had the opportunity to work on digital transformation and uh, particularly uh, artificial intelligence and augmented reality. So had the good fortune of implementing, I would say, some aspects of uh, AI for the first time in the country. Uh, media is one sector which has been completely transformed by digital technologies, mm -hmm. particularly uh, the rise of uh, YouTube or a Netflix, uh, so on and so forth. I've also had the opportunity to work with a number of startups, uh, not only in India, but also in Israel and, uh, and the US. I am a mentor to some accelerator programs, one based in Tel Aviv and the other in Boston. Uh, so, you know, that has given me the opportunity to be in the forefront of uh, some of these digital technologies which are shaping a number of industries. I've also had the uh, opportunity of writing about these. I've authored six books. I teach some papers uh, pertaining to these topics uh, at Masters Union and, uh, and also at IM Indore. Amazing. That's some diversity there. Uh, and very, very, I mean, very fortunate, I would say, to have such, such opportunities as well. So one question, there's a lot of debate around specialization and generalization, mm -hmm. but you in a way started as a generalist, as a consultant, but then you specialized and then moved on and again, I, I'm not sure, but did you specialize again? So what, what are your views on that? I think it uh, a lot depends on personal preferences. Um, in a domain like strategy, um, there is some amount of, let's say, generalization, which helps because uh, strategy cuts across multiple domains. Mm -hmm. So a number of projects I have done have been in the supply chain. Some have pertained to digital transformation. Some have uh, pertained to process improvements and you know getting into nitty gritties of the procurement process of uh, you know cost estimation, so on and so forth. So in a domain like strategy, uh, being a little bit of a generalist helps uh, because you have to know at least a little about various uh, domains. But of course, uh, there are many others who would want to deep dive into a particular area, build their career. Um, be becoming an expert in, in one particular domain. And um, I guess it's really for people to decide uh, which route they want to take. Um, I would only just add one thing over here that um, I think in today's fast cha changing world, some amount of uh, generalized knowledge does help so that you are able to swim with the current and move with the times. And uh, if I look at the government's new education policy, that is also geared towards allowing people uh, to take a mix of courses, you know, that you are not perhaps too over specialized. Mm -hmm. So even engineers can take one or two courses in arts or economics and all. Right. Yeah. So when we're talking about careers and the changing environment, a lot has been said about artificial intelligence and machines taking on human jobs. So yeah. what are your views on that? So I have a slightly different uh, view as compared to others. I think most people uh, tell us not to worry that AI will not take our jobs. But uh, I think uh, having studied both technology over the uh, various decades, as well as AI, I would say AI can definitely take uh, certain jobs. 
particularly repetitive jobs uh, you know which in which one particular task has to be done over and over again those are jobs which uh, ai can take uh, i use this analogy that uh, earlier let's say to wash our clothes uh, you, we had a dhobi a mm -hmm. washerman mm -hmm. and now today we have a washing machine so one can always argue that uh, washing machine has taken the job of a of a washerman you know but that is the way uh, technology really progresses um, you know i mean at various points in time human labor has been uh, replaced by machines and the solution to that is i would say to find uh, new things uh, what humans can do or how humans can uh, work with machines so that uh, there is a bigger let's say more production or more productivity so that uh, human uh, i mean human kind as a whole benefits but uh, certainly uh, some jobs uh, could be taken by artificial intelligence in fact that's already happening makes sense so sir uh, what are those roles which are not being touched by technology then so a couple of areas where i think there is always a demand for uh, what humans bring to the table one is uh, to be um, logical and analyze uh, what really is happening and uh, use uh, let's say uh, you know think very deeply about uh, drivers behind uh, behind certain let's say technologies or change right uh, what what ai is good at is a rule based approach to you know i mean uh, to doing things but where uh, where one requires creativity where one requires um, you know i mean let's say <coughs> going beyond rules to to come up with an outcome that is where uh, you know i mean uh, machines at least today cannot uh, take the role of uh, humans so i would say that uh, you know we are actually as humans we are going to be paid to think uh, to be innovative and to solve problems uh, if we are just doing tasks uh, th th those tasks can be done by machines but uh, i think uh, the jobs of the future will be about as i said problem solving thinking and innovating and that is perhaps what our brain or minds are best suited towards doing so uh, there are people like elon musk who are yeah. coming with companies like neuralink yeah. which are trying to link machines and humans like hmm. do you think in the long term that's really a feasibility there no we are going to see uh, the industry 4.0 is uh, i would say really all about uh, the physical world combining with the digital world Uh, using technologies like iot augmented reality 3d printing ai and so forth so we are uh, definitely going to see more of this collaboration between machines and uh, or collaboration between digital technologies and uh, you know humans uh, for example we are having collaborative robots today they are called cobos mm -hmm. and they can work alongside humans uh, on the on the shop floor on the factory floor so that of course uh, in terms of a long term trend uh, we will continue to see So one question, uh, really fascinated by cars, and I wanted yeah. to ask about self-driving cars. Okay. I mean, people in India are not very upbeat about it. Yeah. But just wanted to know, like, when in India can we see or do you see self-driving cars coming? So uh, we will see um, certain applications of autonomous vehicles. So, for example, uh, let's say if a pizza has to be delivered, or uh, you know your groceries have to be delivered by Amazon or or Big Basket or uh, you know companies like that. they will use autonomous vehicles uh, not drones but uh, because there are certain restrictions on on uh, drone operations right. in india but uh, you will see autonomous vehicles coming to deliver your pizza or to deliver your groceries uh, and these are not going to be cars they are just perhaps going to be you know two wheelers or they are just going to be tricycle kind of vehicles but uh, these will be uh, these will be autonomous uh, they will work on the principles of ai like computer vision like uh, you know decision making uh, i mean based on sensor data and all i would say see that pretty pretty soon it's uh, always difficult to put a particular year but i de definitely expect that uh, especially with the growth of e-commerce uh, in india that uh, we are going to yeah, i mean the technology is already available so it's just a question of uh, making it uh, let's say more available to the masses mm. as a whole but uh, i think the technology is pretty much evolved that for non passengers i mean as i said for deliveries of uh, goods or pizzas and all we we will see autonomous vehicles pretty soon so there's still some time for passengers now i guess yeah but more uh, more due to the i would perhaps the cost reasons i mean oh. i think the uh, google and uh, other companies at tesla have done a fairly fantastic job of right. advancing the technology so technologically it's not so much of a problem there are 
some issues of privacy, there are issues of the amount of data that each driverless car will generate, mm. privacy are related issues, legal issues. Right. If a driverless car is involved in an yeah. accident, you cannot ar arrest a car and put a car in jail and the owner will say that I was not uh, involved, I mean how can you arrest me? You cannot say the Google uh, has made the technology behind the driverless car, so I will go and arrest the CEO of Google, right? So, so there are some issues uh, which, uh, you know, peripheral issues which need to be resolved. But in terms of technology, we are almost there. All right, sir. It was amazing having a Thank conversation you. with you today. That's all from us. Thank you. Thank you.